Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. Today, we're working on Ellie. Ellie is what I call my dream girl, short for my electric bike. This bike is now 11 months old. I put about 12 to 1500 miles, not kilometers, miles on this bike at least every month. Uh, I used to keep track of it, but I don't anymore. I don't even drive my vehicle anymore. Uh, Ellie goes everywhere. This was the trunk that was on the back of her until a few minutes ago. Uh, it's a trunk that I picked up. It's called. It's by the company Plano. They make uh, gun cases and things like that. It's a hard plastic, rigid. Use it for getting all my groceries and all that good stuff. And of course, you can lock it if you want. I took the clips off long ago. I figure if somebody wants to steal my cigarettes or groceries or something, let them. And it was my throw-all. Uh, I kept spare parts in there, uh, stuff that I never needed because I have very expensive $60 a piece uh, tires on here that are puncture proof. I have never had to change a, a blown tube, a punctured tire. Uh, I go through it and probably put air in it about once a month to make sure it stays up at 40 PSI. The roll resistance is amazing. Uh, when I put those tires on, my distance that I could travel on a battery uh, doubled easily just because this thing wasn't rolling slowly. When you let off the throttle or stop pedaling, it just rolled and rolled and rolled and rolled and rolled. So I originally bought this rack here. This is aluminum. It cost me about 40 bucks on Amazon. The reason I bought this one is because it was rated to 350 pounds. And... It has done me well. I have filled the trunk with heavy tools um, to, to go and do house calls. I put my air conditioner on there at one point. Uh, I now have a trailer for the bike, and I'm having another custom trailer made uh, with a hitch so I can pull a trailer behind the bike so I can do house calls and move machines and stuff like that. And I decided that... I get 40 to 50 miles range on this, and that's without pedaling. That's full throttle. Uh, when I go to the store and stuff like that, I'm in Florida. I do not pedal. It's too hot. And I decided that I am so happy with my battery setup. I buy the, the uh, overseas batteries. I'm not spending $500 on a battery because it comes in an aluminum case. Uh, this one was just given to me. I am not spending 500 bucks on a battery because it comes in an aluminum case and they claim it's better. The battery I have is from China. It's a 20 amp hour battery. I paid 140 bucks for it and it still works like a champ. A year later, it claims to get a thousand uh, recycling, a uh, thousand recharges, which is three years. So anyway, what we're doing today is putting pen years on the bike. Uh, panniers are cases that hang off the back of the bike and you can put your gear in there I'm getting rid of the trunk but the real reason that I'm doing the pannier cases is because I'm adding a second battery uh, I'll get almost a hundred miles range before I have to recharge anything and I want something because the batteries uh, you know they don't come in cases they're not protected Hang on. When you buy a battery, this is what it looks like. It's cardboard wrapped in shrink wrap. You can see the little stickers they put on there and all that stuff. On the end is your charging cable. That's where your charger plugs in. And I always remove the little crappy connectors they put on. These are the XT90 connectors. And they have never given me an issue. I melted through two sets of connectors on this because there's so much juice coming out of the battery at 52 volts. It was not melting the wires, but it was melting the connectors. So I replaced it, and that didn't work. And I bought these, and these are awesome. These can handle the power. They're only about 5 bucks a set. And I bought four sets because I'm building a second bike. But anyway, the idea is everything on a bike has to be balanced. Right now... The battery goes in the center in this bag. Well, you really can't see it because of the way I have the bike turned. 
but the battery kind of tore the bag and made it a sloppy mess and I ended up putting a big zip tie around it so that it would stay in place and it's fine but the bike has to be balanced so all the weight needed to be in the center now that I'm putting two batteries one on each side um, I need I can't use a battery up there unless I put a third one so I needed something that I could put my batteries in that was going to look good and the other thing is once I take that center bag out and put the panniers on the side you will not be able to tell that this is an electric bike it is completely stealth I do not have my uh, electronics up here anymore I bought a different ECU controller so I didn't I could take off the speedometer thing I know how fast I'm going uh, and all that so literally all I have is this little that tells me that right now I'm empty because I've been driving it all day and I have my throttle other than this thing right here and this red button you can't tell that this thing is an electric bike once I take that off and put the panniers on the side so the question I had was what did I want to use I decided I'm gonna use both actually I'm gonna build two sets of panniers because I have two electric bikes one set I'm gonna build out of these cases um, they're by Apache. They're completely waterproof, rigid. The reason I wanted rigid was because there's no protection on these batteries when they don't come in the aluminum case. And if the bike falls over, which I've dumped this bike two or three times, my own fault, uh, it's fairly protected. The pedals kind of stop it. The handlebars kind of stop it. And the bag is padded. So the battery sort of was protected. And I decided if I'm going to have it on the back of the bike here... If this thing falls over on the ground it can puncture the battery and these batteries if they get punctured they can actually set on fire so I want it max protection but I also wanted something that looked cool so between the Apache case um, this was $30 and I've got it's got full of foam and stuff it comes in you can put camera equipment in there it's completely waterproof I'm trying to do things with one hand again Thanks, YouTube. It's completely waterproof. It comes with all this fancy foam, and you cut out all the little squares and fit your guns or your cameras or whatever. Uh, I'm taking all this stuff out. And it's got an O-ring around the top and the bottom. When this thing comes together, it's completely watertight. Um... And that's not really that big of a deal for me. I drive an electric bike in Florida. We get rain all the time, but it's usually a light shower. Um, and I don't keep my bike out in the rain. It stays inside. So if I get caught out in a little rain shower or something, no big deal. I just put a bag over my electronic handle. The motor's watertight. All the electrical connections are tight. Um, but I wanted something rigid. I stood on this at the store, and I weighed 240 pounds. So I figure if the bike goes over, it's protected. Now my other choice, obviously, was an ammo can. This is a 50 cal, 50 caliber ammo can. I got this from Harbor Freight, $16. It's got the O-ring seal at the top. It's all one piece. It's uh, molded. It's not uh, riveted together or anything. And that's solid steel. And if the bike falls over this will give maximum protection so when I was at the store yesterday trying to decide which particular uh, box I was going to use to make a set of pen years because I'm not spending $80 a side buying them from a bike shop and they're not very good quality in my opinion not for the hard cases and I'm quite the hard case myself um, I wasn't sure which way I was going to go. So what I did was I brought both of them home. And my particular battery is 10 inches by 6 inches by 3 inches. I can actually put it in this way, secure it, and then I have all this room for storage. I can put it in any particular way I want, use the rest of this for storage. I love this box. It would be $60 for the whole set. Um... 
it comes in many different colors orange green yellow black and gray and beige uh, they had them all at the store you can lock it right here these are great so i bought one of each <clears throat> and i spent the whole night watching youtube videos and couldn't find much on how to do them how to what to use that kind of thing so i decided i got two bikes so i'm making two sets now what i really love about this is the lid comes off it's got locks here you can put it back on when you want because it has legs down both sides once it's closed you're not getting the lid off and here's what i found now i measured it of course at the store make sure you're still in the camera i measured it at the store obviously but this was in the bike, which was outside, and I had to decide. So I ended up bringing it home, and I put the battery in it. And this was awesome. It fit dead on perfect. Both sides. So what I'll do before I put that in, I have some um, half-inch foam. I'm just going to put two strips of half-inch foam to hold it up off the bottom. Half an inch, a little bit less when the weight of the battery sinks down. It's not crimping my cables, and I can also put extra things in there, like this is my bicycle pump for when I'm on the road, uh, bungee cords, extra tools. I always carry an adjustable wrench um, in case I have to pull a tire or do anything else, and I also carry Allen keys, uh, different kinds of stuff, and I can carry all that stuff in one. And if I fit that on both sides, it fits perfect, solid steel, completely waterproof. So the first set I'm going to make, I'm making out of these. I'm going to video basically how I put it together, how I do the steel. Uh, because every video I found online was a bunch of junk. Um, it really was. People using subpar materials. You buy a steel box and then you use aluminum straps to put it on your bike. What's the point? Aluminum is soft. It's ridiculous. So mine's going to be pretty simple, pretty basic. Um, I already bought the steel. If you'll bear with me, my shop is a mess. Because thankfully we started getting rain yesterday. So I kind of threw everything in the shop real quick. I bought steel this is one inch wide it's three feet long and it's quarter inch thick and this is steel now when i'm finished building the set i'm going to spray paint um the whole thing just like i painted the bike with raptor liner it's truck bed liner and it's awesome stuff i've painted entire vehicles with it boats all kinds of things i love it so all this is going to be black with yellow trim and probably some zombie response stickers or decals or something so i ended up going to lowe's this morning i bought all stainless steel hardware these are quarter 20 bolts three quarters of an inch thick two quarter inch washers and a quarter 20 lock nut with a nylon insert because you're on a moving vehicle things vibrate it will loosen on its own get the ones with the nylon I bought four of those, I bought this stick, and I also bought a bolt that was three-eighths of an inch, six inches long. And the reason for that is because this is where they're going, and this is three-eighths of an inch round. So I want it to, I made the first bend already, I'll show you when I make the second bend. I want it to bend that around, and I'm going to cut it to length, obviously. And this is just going to hook right like that. There's going to be another one here. It's going to go down. And then there's going to be one that goes straight across the back and connects the two together. And then we'll connect the bottom as well to the rack. So it'll hang for strength. I'm going to drill and put a bolt through here to lock it on. So no, uh, you know, really nice people can't just come and unhook it and walk away with it. But it's going to be a very basic setup. Um quarter inch thick was thicker than I needed but it was basically the thinnest stuff they had in a strip like this I'll show you how I bent that then I'm going to cut it to length I'm going to measure the box where I want the box to hang on the bike what I want the length to be I'm going to drill a single hole these things do not have to be completely watertight so I'm going to drill 
one hole in the side for each strap, bolt it on. Then I'm going to hang it on the bike and get the proper angle so that it matches the angle of the rack. Then I'll mark and drill the second holes, bolt it in place, and we'll show you how they go on. So stick around. I'm sorry I talked so long, but we'll see what we can do here. Now in this case, I already bent the first one so I know it works. I got my strap here. I've got it on the edge of the, be the bench and I'm going to leave it out about two, three inches. It doesn't matter. I'm going to use my C-clamp. I'm going to move all these. These are what I use when I work on lawn mowers and whatnot. And I'm just going to put this on, clamp it on. I'm not measuring this stuff. Uh, I've been fabricating new things and uh, you know coming up with new ideas for years and years and years and I find that if I'm not going into production on something I don't need exact measurements and when I do go after I bend it I can cut that to the proper length if I want to I can do whatever I want I'll show you how I cut it I happen to have this wrench this is a one and one eighth and a one and one half box wrench these are the ones that you buy. Now I have every size because I'm a mechanic, but these are the ones that you buy at Home Depot or Lowe's or whatever. I'm chasing a bee right now, hang on. And they are specifically for putting trailer hitch balls on your truck. So if you go over the trailer hitch section, you'll see this, it cost me 10 bucks. I've had this for years. Um, and I wanted something with leverage something that would work for what I want to do so what I'm doing here is I'm using the one and one eighth inch and basically anybody that's ever had a bolt or a nut and they needed more leverage you take a big wrench or a pipe and it gives you leverage that's what I'm doing I'm putting this on here just like this just so that it's just inside of the wrench I'm not going way up. I'm going right till it almost will fall out. And then I'm simply, hope you can see that. I don't know if you can. But then I'm simply taking this wrench and bending. Don't worry. We'll clean it up after. That's why I bought that 3 8 bolt. So you just get a bend on it. Pretty simple, pretty easy. Take the clamp back off. Now this bend should be the same length as the bend I made on the other end, but it doesn't matter. If it's not, I can always cut it and make it exactly it. So we're going to go outside because I don't have a, an anvil in here. And I'm going to show you how to fix this bend. See how big it is right now? Fit my whole finger in there, but we're going to fix that. Okay. So here is the best thing that I have to be able to beat on. This is a solid steel commercial trailer. I bought a 3 8 inch around 6 inch long bolt. And the whole point of this, it cost me all of 90 cents, was so that I could take this wide that I just bent and turn it into this, which fits perfectly, which also happens to be the same round thickness as the rack on the bike. So all I do... Find a flat, flat area that you can beat on and use this as a guide. Stick it up in there. Don't worry about it being pretty. It only takes a minute. Don't get your fingers caught. is holding three things at once. But once you get it, 
Just double check both sides. And it's round. That was in real time. Now it fits perfect. There's not a lot of space for wiggling. Before I slide this on, I'm going to take and wrap some electrical tape, two roll, two, two winds around so that there's uh, plastic rubber between the metal that it's clipping onto and this metal. And we're going to go back inside and I'm just going to use a screwdriver to pry that back up and make it flat just like that side. Now I'm just going to take the screwdriver. And this stuff is a quarter of an inch thick, but it's really not that difficult to work with. And I don't know if my tape measure is sitting right here. It might be. But I just want to see. It's not. I don't do a lot of woodworking, so I never know where my tape measure is. Uh, I'm just going to mark on an empty piece of paper. How long that is just because I'm curious it's that long and I'm gonna put it there you see the mark right there it's that wide and it's the same width on this side so those are gonna match and I'm gonna use my angle grinder and I'm gonna get my tape measure and I'm gonna figure out the length and I'm gonna cut it with the angle grinder I'll show you how easy that is and now I've got two straps, and you saw how fast that took. Uh, I don't know, two, three minutes. Public service announcement. When you're working on a hobby, when you're working on something that you like doing, stop often. Don't smoke, I'm actually cutting down. I'm down to smoke every three hours. Uh, but I got my drink right here. And the air conditioner is cranking right behind you, and I'm right in the view of the air conditioner. If you get a chance, I don't care if you subscribe to my channel, all I want you to do is hit the like button. I have to get X amount of likes before YouTube will even put my video out to the public. That's why people are always asking you to hit the like button. And they want you to subscribe so that they can start making money on commercials and all that kind of crap. I don't care about that. All I want is for you to hit that like button. I was looking at my channel. And I realized, I have two channels, uh, I post videos uh, fixing lawnmowers, uh, weed eaters, commercial zero return mowers. I do that for my customers. It's a respect thing. So I film when I'm working on their machine, and then not only do they know I didn't rip them off for something the machine didn't need, but they actually get to watch the entire process. I posted a few videos and thought nothing of it. They were specifically for customers. And I was scrolling through my channel yesterday, thinking about what to do, and I realized that a couple of my videos got a whole lot of hits. Uh, one was uh, uh, for a riding lawnmower that was just an analysis for a customer. And uh, I got a couple for Ellie, the electric bike, something that I originally had like nine hits on. And one is over 600, one is oh, only like a 150, and another one's over a thousand. So I figured I'd keep making videos about fixing machines and building electric bikes. But remember to take a break, don't overdo it. When I'm finished here, we'll get back to the video. Okay, so. The magic of film, I'm already there. I've already tested both sides. This is the first bend I made. Tested it to make sure it would hook on there correctly. This is the one I made in front of you guys. Put it on there to make sure it fit correctly with very little space. Sorry the shop is a mess. I really gotta all this crap. That's why the shop's a mess. Anyway, I cut the first one because I wanted to show you that it just hangs on. Now, I brought the box over 
and I held it where I wanted it and measured my length. Um, it doesn't have to be perfect. In my case, I'm only bringing it down to about here. It's all going to be on the back side, so you're not going to see anything but the little hook right there. So just kind of guesstimate how high you want it. Remember, it's going to hang if you're using the same system as me. Noise alert, because I am going to do this so you guys can see how fast it is. This is just an angle grinder, 15 bucks at any store, 20 bucks, with a thin cutoff wheel. I buy these at Harbor Freight. Uh, I want to say a 10 packs, like four bucks or something. I've already marked it at my seven inches. Safety glasses. I'm not going to get mine. I cut it most of the way through see and then I just to get a nice clean edge I'll take the I'll put a different wheel on here this wheel it's a little thicker it's a grinding wheel and I'll clean up these edges to make sure that they're clean before I finish the project but for now I have two solid steel straps that perfectly fit and they're the same length the bend is the same length because of the way I used my wrench to do it. You might do it with something different. Um, do a Walmart rental. Go to the store. Spend 10 bucks, 12 bucks on this wrench. Use it for this project if you want. And when you're finished, take it back to the store. Get your money back. But I now have two clips that are bent perfectly the same. And they both fit on. Kaplinka, Kaplinka. So now what I'm going to do bring you over here so you can see now what I'm gonna do is drill one hole probably about two inches down on both of them and then I'm gonna take these and I'm going to I know how much I want it to come above because I know where I want it to set on the rack I want this hook to be one inch taller than the box so I'm going to drill a hole in there where I want it probably right probably right about here on both of them and then I'm gonna match drill through the box put the bolts in just one on each strap and then I'm gonna go hang it up and that way when it hangs on the rack it will level itself out and then I can mark it and know where to drill the second hole so that the bike racks slightly tilted I want the, the boxes to match I don't want the bike rack to be this way and the box to be that way and it'll jump so I'll show you okay now I came into a bit of a situation something that I already thought about before I started the project but I'm one of those guys that if I'm inventing something I get to it when I can get to it and hopefully you can see this the side of the box sticks out more than the actual box that we're going to bolt to. So if you take that flat piece that we made and you put it on the side of the box, the problem is you got all this space in here, hopefully you can see that, you got all that space in here that you can actually, you know, you don't want that. and. When you bolt it up tight to the box, it's gonna be tight against the lid and you won't be able to open the lid and close it. So, a few minutes ago, I went outside. I have a bit of a space to work. And I, you'll see I put a bend in this. It comes down now, goes out, and then straight back down. I'm not gonna show you how I did it because I literally used my trailer and my hammer to get this S shape in it. And here's the reason why. Because now when I put it where it belongs, I can open the lid and I can bolt it dead flat to this and if I want to I can even make that S bend just a little bit lighter so it's closer but I absolutely think that's perfect so I'm gonna go bend the other one and then I'm gonna drill some holes and I'll show you what I did okay now I have two that are bent into an S shape 
second one actually came out prettier than the first one because I had already done it once and figured out how to do it best. Then I've marked, I don't know if the camera will pick that up, but I've marked the bracket as well as the can on both sides. I should be using a Sharpie, but you know, I don't care. I want it to be approximately one inch in from the side and mine, my particular one, I need to be one inch up. So if I line those marks up, that's one inch from the top of the box to the top of the hook and I'm about an inch in. Same on both sides. Remember, I'm only drilling the top hole because I want it to be wobbly and move so I can make the angle correct and mark for the second hole. Now, honestly, if you don't know how to drill a hole, you shouldn't be here. But I drilled the hole through the bracket first and I've already checked to make sure that my bolt goes through. Now, I'm going to match up the marks I've already made, bringing in about an inch, and if you don't want to measure it again, this is one inch wide steel. Just about like that, match them up. Remember, it doesn't have to be dead perfect. No one's going to see anything. Never forget your oil. You are cutting steel. Put a little drop of oil. through than that quarter inch bar which only still took a minute be careful getting those off they will stab you and now I've got a single hole I put it in place bolt fits through them both we're good to go I'm going to put the bolt from the inside out so that the excess hangs out the back because I've got plenty of room and it won't get in the way I'm gonna drill the other hole and I'll be back with you in a second now I've got all my holes drilled, two holes here, two holes here. Both of them in the approximate right space, and when I drill the bottom two, they'll be approximately the same. What I'm going to do right now, remember, <clears throat> I may end up putting a platform across the top of my bike rack, put, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> put my trunk back on, and if I do that, I won't be able to open this. If I put the trunk on so I can run grab groceries or anything like that, then I won't be able to open the lid while I'm on the go if I have to. Just take a little getting used to getting them back on the hinges. I don't know why. I know I'm getting old and I need glasses, but um, so in my case, if I can't open it, I want to be able to open it enough to slide the lid off. So in this case, one latch is going to face forward and the other one's going to face backwards. But all I'm going to do now, I got a washer, I'm going to put the bolt through it. I'm going to put it through from the inside of the can. Always use washers, this stuff is steel, but you want a, you want max. Uh, oh good, I could use, don't go with three quarter bolts, use half inch for another washer on. I'm gonna go back to the store and get half inch bolts. You don't know until you know, right? And basically, uh, that's seven eighths. So seven eighths as well. Yep, both seven eighths. So, it looks like you might be one of us. Sorry, 7 sixteenths. He's 7 sixteenths, man. So I'm just going to tighten it. Now you can't just hand tighten it because these have nylon in them. So I got to tighten it. Yes, I know it's candy cane upside down. Candy cane upside down. But there's no sense in me trying to hold it till the end. And then it will hold itself. Now that's probably more than enough of a hook and a bolt to hold that on the frame. It is just a bicycle. If they want what's in it, they're going to take the whole bike. Um, 
But for right now, this is what I'm working with. Nut, uh, bolt, I mean, washer. Through the hole. It's in the hole. Why can't you go to your hole? Or as the Scottish people would say, right, I'm about to get me whole. Tighten this up, bingo, bango, bingo. Now, if all works the way it worked in my head, which is a pretty scary place to be sometimes, remember I only want it one so I could move it and get the correct angle so I can mark it and then drill the second hole where I want it. If all works like it does in my head, I will be able to put this back on, or actually, man there, oh, that just rubbed me wrong, I don't know. And I got plenty of space to open and close. And let's see if it goes on the bike the way it's supposed to go on the bike. Hooks go right on the rail. Oh, I should have taken that into consideration. Oh, that's okay. I can work with that. Here we go. That's another reason why I only drilled one hole. I'll show you here in just a second That's what I'm working with. I was more worried about measuring the box than I was wearing this. I have these cross members here. And it just so happened that right where I drilled and put the bracket is where the stupid cross members were. But because I didn't put the second bolt in yet, I can still move those the way I want. So once I get it where I want it to be, I might have to grind the edge off of that so it can get closer. Uh, but now you can adjust these straps the way you want so that they're pretty flat Back up here and you can see that the can hangs off the side and That the lid works correctly And you see how it just kind of straightened up a little bit. That's what I'm looking for I'm looking for the same height here as here when that's down in its position so that it looks like it was made at the at the factory i'll be back okay so as you can see now i have the same amount of space on this side between the box and the rag as i have on that side now later on i'm gonna drill here below this rack with a thin bolt and nut on both of those and as it squeezes together around this round piece, it will stop it from bouncing up and down. Okay? And it will lock it on so no one can steal it. Now, in the... Uh, I don't know. In an effort to be completely honest, remember I said a minute ago that I didn't measure the spaces here and that they were basically both where the cross pieces were. I went ahead and decided, just to make life easier, I drilled another hole about an inch over so that I could clear that. And now it does. I may have to squeeze this in just a little bit. You know, there's little tiny adjustments that you have to be made. But you can see that when it's down where it's supposed to be, I've got the same amount of space there. It's custom but it looks like I purchased it this way Wow one-handed with YouTube uh, and there you go I've got a solid steel ammo can paneer you can see how it fits on the side I'll move the bike uh, in part two I'm gonna show you how to drill those holes how to bolt them correctly how to mark and set the bottom bolts once you get those straps the way you want they might be at a diagonal behind the box 
but you won't be able to tell. I'll show you how I wrap that a little bit before I put that on, squeeze it to make sure it doesn't rattle, make noise, or have metal on metal. And I'll show you the finished product in the second part of this video. Thanks for watching. I hope this helps you. Um, if you decide to put two batteries on your bike or you just want to be completely incognito, with this bag gone, the wiring will go straight from there, straight to there. No one that looks at the bike, unless they know what a hub motor looks like, will even be able to tell this is an electric bike. Cops won't notice, no one will notice. If they don't know it's electric, they won't look in your boxes to see if they can steal your $200 batteries. So, hope this helped. See you soon. Thanks for hanging out with me while we did the first part of this Paneer build. I don't know exactly how long it took me, but this is going to be real time. I'm not editing any footage out. I'm just putting all the clips together, and it's going to be what it's going to be. I think that if you know how to use a tool at all, you don't have to be a mechanic like me. You don't have to be an engineer. Uh, you just have to see a good idea or think of a good idea and figure out how to make it work. I really like the way that looks. It's strong. It's not finished. I haven't done anything since, well, the last clip. Uh, I have a bunch of customers that I need to take care of. Um, I got to fix this guy tomorrow. And then I got another machine over there that I got to fix the next day. So it's probably, today's Sunday. It's probably going to be like Wednesday or Thursday until I finish this paneer bag. Uh, it's basically going to consist of four more bolts. I'm going to make one more bracket. I was just sitting here thinking about how I was going to attach the bottom of it so it doesn't shake when I'm riding. Um, but I'm going to show you that in the second part of the video. Please hit the like button and stay tuned. If you hit the notification bell, when part two comes out, it'll come up and it'll let you know. But uh, hopefully I'll see you soon.